Hi, I'm Jeff. This is Tropical Plants at 53 degrees north. Well, it's very unusual for us. It's 32 degrees Celsius in here, so tank top has arrived and the woolly hat has gone. And if you're wondering why I've not had a video for a while, it's because we have a new arrival, a new puppy. And anyone who's ever had a puppy before will know that it's like having a baby uh, that doesn't keep still and that moves around very, very quick, much quicker than you can. And uh, well, it's pretty full on, that's for sure. So I've just been keeping the greenhouse ticking over, but let's have a look at what's in bloom for August. Let's jump in. And we are in. So what we're gonna do is work our way around the greenhouse and not just look at things that are in bloom, but look at things that are of interest. So I don't know if I've shown you this before. This is a Boston fern and it's 32 degrees in here at the moment. So. You would expect it to be struggling a little bit, but actually it isn't. It seems to be doing much better now in the heat than it was when things were a little bit cooler. Now whether that's the light or not that's causing that, I don't know. So we'll just work our way around. So this is just about hanging on here. You can see how these blooms starting to go over now. So this is Neostaris Lucineri. I've had three bloom spikes on this. and The blooms are nice, but they're not as nice as the blue one which is the one I really wanted but uh, nevertheless it has a fantastic fragrance so it's worth keeping just for that and we've got uh, a couple of nepenthes over here again not doing a great deal I think the light is definitely affecting them in a positive way this one has begun to start to show a little bit quicker growth now as my clivia I believe I've got a couple of years to wait for that to bloom so we've got a Trotoscantia purpurea there. Something's been nibbling on the end of this. I've no idea what it is. Can you see there? There and there. Um, I obviously don't think it liked it that much because it's never been back. This was about a couple of weeks ago. Never been back for more. So we have over here Miltonia. I'm going to do a video actually on Miltonia versus Miltoniopsis because that's a question that's been in my mind quite recently so I thought I'd do a video on that but it's going to need a little bit more research yet before I do that. Um, I'm still waiting for this to bloom my Hoya. It's put lots of straggly growth on here, lots of kind of climby traily things going on but it's still no sign of a bloom yet so we'll have to wait for that. And some nice pictures still on the Nepenthes Rebecca Soper, very sticky. Uh, it's putting some new growth on as well over there and you picture down there i've left the hydrofogger on actually because it's so hot in here i've had to turn all the fans off while i'm doing the video like i say it's 32 degrees a couple of new pictures there i really must get some new nepenthes but they're so expensive over here so this elizabeth ann buckleberry this bulbar film has finally begun to put a little bit of growth on there uh, I guess that's going to be a new pseudo bulb. I don't think we're going to get any blooms from that yet again. It wouldn't be the first time, would it? Uh, I know you've all seen this a million times, but let's just have another look and take in and enjoy my Diplodenia. Sorry, my Mandevilla, because that's the name, the proper name for it, as I think we've established now. The Mandevilla Sanderi. It seems to have stopped in terms of where it's travelling to. It's kind of travelling about halfway across the roof there. Uh, it's just hanging on in there. It's been there for a few, well, a couple of months now. You know, a little foul. I've, on, based on somebody's advice, I have took off some of the moss off there to kind of let them have a, a bit more aeration, there, a bit more aeration, a bit more ventilation for the roots uh, to, in an attempt to stop these from going yellow. They are the older leaves actually, and I, it, honestly they are not as yellow as they appear on the video they are pretty green really um, the new ones are looking okay and we are definitely going to get some blooms on this catlia i can see one coming up there um, i don't think i don't know if you've seen these my sarnuk tile and black has made a strong comeback after having no roots now uh, a new growth on it there and a new one down there and it's finally not moving in its pot which tells me that it must have some roots I'm very much looking forward to, I don't know if anybody remembers my video on this Lelia Anceps last year and we've got a great big, I'm thinking a bloom spike there I'm hoping it's not just a pseudo bulb um, it may well be, I don't know, it does look different to pseudo bulbs to me that looks like it could be a bloom spike but we'll see anyway. Oh, they go really long, don't they? 
few more Tredescantia there. One of them has found its way into the bathroom in, in the house. So I've got a bit of a gap there. Uh, this is going to come soon. Nice big fat bud on Rinko Stylus, not Rinko Stylus, uh, Rinko Lelia Catlia, Chialin Red Cat. Yeah, okay, so let's move along. Um, everything here is looking fine, the, there's no signs of any distress on any of these. Up to the fowls, um, nothing really to report there, new growth there, so I'm going to have to report that soon. And we have our Kumbergia brownie. Gosh, I've even forgotten the name. It seems that long since. It's nearly a couple of weeks since I've been in here um, to actually do some work. Um, so yeah, that's what puppies do to you, unfortunately. But they're great fun. I wouldn't be without him now. and He's only been here six days. So let's move over to what is usually titled the warm side, but obviously at this particular time of the year, the whole thing is the same. That's my Flobodiums. Now, some people seem to think that Flobodiums, because they're ferns, they need a lot of water. And in actual fact, Flobodium is one that doesn't, it actually thrives being more on the drier side. And it takes most of the moisture in through these uh, furry rhizomes here. So don't worry about yours being overly dry. And actually, um, I found with mine, especially this one that's in this like really tight pot, I hardly get any water down into it, it just kind of sits on the top and then flows over and it doesn't mind at all and when you do overwater them you can see they really kind of droop, they don't like it and these spores on here are getting really big now it'll be interesting to try and pot some of them up and see what they're like because I was reading about flabodiums um, well not just flabodiums, a lot of ferns they have this really weird kind of life cycle and once they germinate they don't form little plants straight away I can't remember the exact term for it but they turn into like this weird kind of a formation first I must do a video on that actually because you know what they say about the best way to actually learn something is to teach it it makes you learn about it so I think I will do that as a video um, I know I've got a lot of fern lovers on there my Nepenthes Berkii. This one here, this picture has kind of buried itself in the media. And I believe this is what they do. This is what they do in the wild. They don't just kind of dangle like that. The, certainly the, the basal ones don't. They sit in the, uh, the soil, you know, wherever they are on the ground. And that will partially bury itself in the soil and the moss and um, that way they stay upright of course as the plant starts to vine then they produce different pictures part way up the vine and they have the like the mid pictures and the upper pictures and um, past my griffon my begonia griffon i know it's now griffon not gryphon because griffon is referring to uh, a griffin it's just a different spelling to a griffin which is this mythical creature and that apparently looks like the wings of this mythical creature I, and it actually really does uh, another Flobodium there that's the Flobodium Morium Divana the Pelagoniums aren't looking as good now but they will come into bloom again throughout the, the summer um, here's my Silomontana looking nice probably ready for another kind of snip back and start it off somewhere else this is looking its best now so this is my Caleri Brazil gem now that is a really nice plant isn't it beautiful color I don't know if it's coming out on the video really odd with these things because they produce these flowers quite low down and then they suddenly produce these longer growths with blooms on them as well now why would anybody not grow Caleria I never heard of them it seems nobody else has either um, if you're into Jesneriads that is a beautiful one to grow in my opinion uh, my uh, what is it a Denium obesum and that one is loving this really hot weather the plumeria is going crazy now I don't know whether that will actually get some buds on it or that one is a bit young yet and I've got another one down here um, which it did succumb to red spider mite at one point and I sprayed it um, it, it's put a lot of growth on since then so we will just keep going here so this ventricosa again for some reason it's producing these 
kind of weird shaped ones and it's not meant to be like that and although it's caught a little bit of the systemic uh, insecticide spray as I was spraying and that's caused it uh, not a good sign really but I'll keep, keep persisting with it uh, where are we another Calaria that one is sunshine again it had some really low blooms and then it's produced this big tall stem and it's putting them out at the top again beautiful beautiful plant Penthes fusca another hairy pelagonium and my uh, mandevilla sanderi this were they were the three cuttings i'm still waiting for that one to start vining on its way uh, anybody who remembers my bougainvillea so this is it's looking floppy at the moment but it was it i don't know whether it just doesn't like the humidity in here um, but it is going to get some bracts there it's looking better than it was anyway and it is climbing it's just never been a particularly vigorous one so let's get to some blooms so we have the streptocarpus that one's going over a little bit we have the encyclia radiata still providing lots and lots of scent despite the only few blooms the nobly is that's going over now they need pulling off really and um, what have we got we've got uh, that one is polka dot purple we've got katie we've got crystal ice just coming into its own now we've got our pelagonium and side uh was it aztec and side aztec oh, i can't remember whatever uh, look it up <laughs> uh, we've got katie there we've got a uh, beautiful beautiful epidendrum there got a video on that if you've not seen it and um, beginning to go over a little bit and i'm glad to say this one's come back and um, I, I did do a video on this one the entire way back uh, in the spring so this is my Burrigia in LA Isla Swiss Beauty and even though it's not absolutely superb looking at the moment because it's still got a few of the blackened leaves it's producing some nice blooms the scent is fantastic especially in this sun and you can see see all the new growth on the on the periphery there all the way around the edges which is providing uh, some nice new roots and I can see right in the center there next to the label there is another spike coming so I think that one can be considered a rescued plant the dendrobium nobly star class apollon as we think it now is these blooms are beginning to go over but there's another load coming just there so that's giving me plenty of bang for my buck at the moment so oh, a bit of a sad story here so nina nina's orchids give you a shout out there so this one is one of her recommendations this is a gloriosa superba rothschildiana which I bought 27th of June and it, it looked like it was going to bloom very very early I mean it, it shot up from when I got it and guess what slug came along bit off the growing tip and it's never budged since now when I looked it up it did say that it branched out but it's clearly not branching out and I'm really really disappointed because I was very much looking forward to that however if I just try and pan you around slowly without causing too much of a jarring effect I bought two and this one over here still has its growing tip so I'm hoping that I will get some blooms from that so if you do have Gloriosa Lily don't let any slugs come along and bite the top off because then it will just stop as mine have so let's just have another look down here so we've got still plenty of streptocarpus on the go down there what else have we got nothing much of interest there let's move on lots of fernery really like this fern here again i must do one on this one um, you can see the different colors on this fern and uh, see the new leaves see how bronze they are and they really go quite big and stay quite bronze so this is terris quadriorita i've had that since may and i'm hoping to repot that one soon and try and get it to grow a little bit bigger the fern there and this has recovered now my cephalotus i'm glad to say um, somebody came up with a tip the other day which i have to say i'm not absolutely convinced on but uh, it's nice of them to post a tip and i think what i will do is offer try it out myself he said about when you repot them repot them in wet soil rather than dry soil because if you use wet soil then the soil won't get compacted and won't shrink and but as you can see mine hasn't shrunk has it it's still Pretty much the same level as it was before and the same with the divisions over there so i'm not sure as to the uh, 
not only the efficacy but the usefulness of that tip I don't know it might might turn out to eat my words as time goes on um, so anyway we have anyway I'm grateful for the tip any tips are always welcome um, my little sun juice <laughs> how brittle my little sun juice uh, that which obviously needs a new label uh, but they are going quite big I'm surprised they've gone quite big so this one is Tradescantia fluminensis Nanook lilac very very slow growing Tradescantia in my experience so far it has a lovely pink growth when they're new so that one was on top of that one and now been put in on there I snipped it off put it in there and that's rooted as well so I may do that again I don't think this is going to be a traily one uh, so what else have we got we've got asparagus fern it is kind of struggling a bit up there because it's very hot up there and it is very close to the roof uh, but having said that, it's okay. It's not. It's not as good as it was when it was shaded a little bit. Let's just say there's a few of these uh, tiny leaves are shedding. So here we've got the Nepenthes gaia, and I can show you how effective it is if I can get this camera right. So we'll just look at this picture. I'll see if I can get the camera right inside. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see floating in there? There is a, I don't know what the light's like, there's a dead wasp down at the bottom of it. Didn't even know there was a wasp in here, but it's got it, it's caught it. Great big picture there, and that's my definitely my biggest picture yet on this plant. I would definitely recommend, if anybody gets any Nepenthes, unless you've got like the patience of Job, get a mature plant, should we say, or you'll end up waiting for years and years with the little tiny ones. I have been getting a few white fly in here, that's what these are for. It just kind of seem a bit odd having these sticky traps next to Nepenthes. But uh, the white fly don't seem to go for the Nepenthes for some reason. That Tradescantia has returned, that one's okay. Uh, that's the tricolour minima, that one seems quite happy. Over to the begonias, this one is my luxurians. It's not going to be in that pot for long is it? I do love the red stem on that. And I saw some great photos of this. If you don't follow me on Instagram, get over to the link in my description and you'll see some fab photos of my Begonia Luxurians. So what else have we got over here? Of course, the poor old Mastavalias are struggling in this heat. Another of the, of the Begonias, this is the Fuchioides. Nice blooms on the end there. Again, they're not spectacular, but we are aiming to get this, if you saw the begonia video, we're aiming to get this into a multi-stemmed plant. Now I don't know whether the pictures that I've seen are multi-stemmed because the same plant has been made to be multi-stemmed, because sometimes when you snip them off at the top they don't only just branch out but they also start to produce some shoots from the base. Or it's the, the case that the ones that I've seen are just lots of them planted together. I don't know, maybe anyone who can inform me of that if they've been growing this plant for a while. We're going to curly fire flush, you can see where it gets its name from now, the curl there, and the new growth is fiery red all down the stem there, and there's a new little fiery red leaf, beautiful plant there. So we've got some various streptocarpus at the top there, some more down here. Uh, the poor old Kalahari has gone over, but at least we're getting some leaves on it now. We've got the uh, Begonia, what's that one, Spotty Dotty, uh, Maculata Whitei. Gorgeous DS Aramis uh, Streptocarpus there, and the Caramel one, DS Caramel. Another little Begonia here, this is a new one that you've not seen. So this one is, what is it, uh, Bowerai. That doesn't get particularly big, apparently. Uh, and it has a, a nickname of something to do with eyelashes because it goes, see these little eyelashes all the way around? Very cute, I like that one. And a new one, finally, a new Harlequin has finally uh, begun to bloom. That's the first of the Harlequin varieties and I've had these since like March. So this is Streptocarpus Harlequin Sapphire and you can see why it's called sapphire or you can if you see it in real life anyway it's a beautiful sapphire colour and I've got loads of these different harlequin ones and that's the only one that's bloomed yet uh, but as I've seen from the crystal ice they don't all bloom at the same time so these are also this one over here is also uh, harlequin and they are they're showing some really good signs of growth 
that one's got a bloom coming now so that one should come soon another begonia so that one is what's that mason or masonian can't read it from there miana yeah masoniana begonia masoniana you see it's kind of warty it's like a like a toad that one again i've not had these very long i've got those little tiny tiny plants from a garden center dead dead cheap now look at this one so this is a pinguicula and look at that pretty little bloom there i don't know if it's there you go is it focused so this one is what's this one Pingu, pinguicula can't see it from that side cyclosector i thought it wasn't going to do much this one because it was so small that one did bloom last year and it looks like it may start to come very soon a couple more begonias silver jewel silver lace listada i like that splash in the middle it's quite uh, what's the word kind of fluorescent okay so what else have we got over here another begonia so this one is the i can't remember sea urchin yes of course sea urchin that does have a curl in it as well I kind of see, it kind of look like a sea urchin, doesn't it? Really uh, furry leaves there. So that's nice, that's a nice one to look at. Um, and we'll just kind of round off the tour in the greenhouse by looking up at this one. So this is my Sologene speciosa. Dead easy to grow in my climate. Um, I didn't like this the first time I saw it, but it kind of grows on me. I think it's really rather attractive it's unusual isn't it an unusual one to look at and it certainly blooms very freely and very easily and it's the only one of my orchids apart from the vanda which is you never get to see that there's the vanda up there apologies for the flashing light it isn't actually flashing it just looks like it's on the video but that's the vanda that never blooms so i'm hoping one day one day it will bloom for me but back to the Sologene speciosa yeah gorgeous thing you can see how when it's pollinated whatever pollinates that would get a nice little parcel on its head there from underneath there but if you can see inside there uh, that like a furry path like a road leading right up to the middle whether it gets a reward or not I don't know I was listening to like a gardener's question time on Radio 4 yes I know I'm a Radio 4 listener finally and you know, you know you're getting old when you become a Radio 4 listener and uh, it, was, no, it wasn't Gardener's Question Time actually, uh, it might not have been Radio 4 <laughs> it was uh, an RHS podcast, a Royal Horticultural Society do a really good podcast and you wouldn't think it would translate into like a non-visual visual medium well the podcast was, it was great actually so when I'm out gardening and working the podcast format is really good the way they've put it together um, is very very successful i mean gardener's question time has been going for like 40 50 years hasn't it on radio 4 and that's obviously managed to keep people interested just by them listening in and they, they, they paint the picture really well it's very very good the only thing i can say it's analogous to is listening to a book on audible that's what i'm looking the word i'm looking for on audible you listen to a book and if it's if it's done well it can really paint a picture okay we're back from a little unscheduled break because my iphone actually shut itself down because it's too hot in here it's 32 degrees in here so who knew iphones don't like to be too hot uh, it's not a problem we normally get over in the uk anyway this podcast was talking about how orchids have kind of evolved over millions of years to bloom for a long period of time because and i think i mentioned this in one of my other videos because they have quite a complicated way of being pollinated and very often they don't reward the insect or the bird or the moth or whatever it is that's pollinating them they don't reward them with anything they do it by trickery and they kind of somehow entice the pollinating insect or animal inside and they keep them there they hold them there in like a trap and find obviously i'm not talking about every single orchid here i'm talking about one specific one which i forget what it was and uh, they hold them there and they douse them in the pollen and then they send them on the way and it's only really the modern plants and, and flowers that have developed a way of rewarding the insect um, so yeah it's really interesting that, that what I was thinking about the other day it just happened to kind of pop up on this 
podcast. So this is why orchids are so good and why they bloom for so long. That's what's going on in the greenhouse. So what we need to do is have a look outside at the plants and see what's blooming out there. And don't go because you might just be lucky enough to see my new puppy. And who doesn't want to see a puppy? So let's get started outside. Okay, so I just want to show you a few little plant combinations and one or two things of interest. So this is my Brugmansia. And those of you who have watched some of my videos will see the, the, or recall the troubles I've had with this plant. It's still not looking brilliant, but all these these uh, blooms that you can see here that look like they're half dead and about to drop off, well, they're not. They, they get up in the morning and they're, they're all totally open. They just open over overnight. Quick shot of my banana there. Uh, it's an Ensetti, actually, which isn't a true banana, sometimes called the false banana and uh, just a couple of the carnivorous plants again i've divided and repotted these venus fly traps and they've definitely come back with a vengeance now they're definitely enjoying the sunshine that we've got at the moment uh, a couple of little saracenias there purpurea and uh, another unnamed variety and like i say just a, a couple of plant combinations in the garden really just they're and they're all purely by accident none of these have been planted to get the colors to match uh, a lovely kind of a, a yellowy orange crocosmia there and uh, just a kind of standard hydrangea but just over my little box hedge here is my favorite here this one is a hydrangea paniculata and uh, especially on, a, on an evening it looks really fantastic with the crocosmia in the background a really nice happy accident of a, of a combination there and I keep showing this, this is my uh, Sorbus Pink Pagoda and you can see these berries are now beginning to go pink and they will last right the way through till winter and they'll get some really fabulous leaf colour, uh, autumn leaf colour. Um, I'm not particularly fond of that one there so I'll just kind of whiz past that one. Um, and you can see some nice, uh, there's a Monada at the back there, uh, what else have we got? Just a, this, I mean this border completely changes at this time of year. Uh, just a phlox there. Oh, I kind of get a gap in between, or oh, the choisier there you can see. Like June, there's a kind of a June gap. Oh, I really like this, uh, this is a Japanese anemone, you, you get white ones and I really like this, this colour. So what you've all been waiting for really, never mind plants, here is fudge so meat fudge now I know this is nothing to do with what's in bloom but I thought you might like to see him anyway this is why I've not been putting as many videos out recently so fudge is a multi poo um, which is a crossbreed between a Maltese and a Thai poodle and uh, it took me 51 years nearly 52 years to get my very first pet so I'm very excited to introduce him to you uh, this is what he does for most of the time when he's not causing chaos he's eight weeks old at this point and uh, he's great fun he's extremely fuzzy he's just like a like a fur ball i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you on the next one bye